This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. As we turn to India, where tens of thousands of farmers are converging on the capital city of New Delhi by tractor and on foot to demand the repeal of new laws that deregulate agricultural markets. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi says the measures give farmers more freedom to set their own prices and sell directly to corporate buyers. But opponents say the neoliberal policies are a boon to corporations and roll back key labor and crop price protections that could have a devastating impact on the livelihood of farmers. Agriculture is the leading source of income for more than half of India's 1.3 billion population. The ongoing protests come after a nationwide demonstration Thursday when an estimated 250 million workers, farmers and their allies joined in what's believed to be the largest organized strike in history anywhere in the world. For more, we go to Mumbai to speak with P. Sainath, longtime Indian journalist, founder of People's Archive of Rural India, or PARI. It's great to have you back again. The farmers now, I think that maybe there's 200,000 to a quarter of a million of them on five points on the Delhi border. The government approach to them is actually extremely callous and very, very aggressive. On the one hand, they're putting out some stuff for the media saying, you know, we're talking to them. They want to solve this problem. On the other, the prime minister is making speeches in his own constituency that this entire thing is a conspiracy by the opposition. And the government has no shine of uh, shame about it at all. It is trying to look like the reasonable host. At the same time, it has put up barricades barbed wire. It has dug 10, foot by 10 feet by 10 feet trenches in the national highways to prevent these farmers from reaching Delhi and have used water cannon and tear gas water cannon in the coldest winter that Delhi has had. It had its coldest day in 70 years two days ago. And you're using water cannons on people Many, several of whom, those farmers, are in their late 60s and early 70s. On that kind of person, you are using water cannons and telling them. And you have a captive media, of course, that makes it look like the government is just getting it wrong in the way they are talking to the farmers. These are all hicks and you know rural yokels. They just need to be spoken to sweetly. Whereas the laws that they are protesting, Amy, are devastating. To understand one very important thing about the protests, and for that you need to understand what kind of mischief was played in the laws. Three major laws have been passed in Parliament which devastate the farmers, and you mentioned them as you introduced the subject. Two days later, when the opposition walked out in protest, they rammed through four labor laws codifying 29 existing complex legislations and made them into four and rammed it through. Now, the question is, why did they feel the need to pass these laws at the height of the pandemic? Mr. Modi had a majority before the pandemic. He, had a, he has a big majority. He will have it for two, three years after the pandemic. The reasoning was these blokes are on their knees now. They can't organize. They can't hit back. And the government, believing that, went for this action, not understanding the resolve of these farmers who have come back massively at the government. Just one clause I want to read you from the laws. You will not believe. I, I don't know. You can tell me if you've ever read laws in a democratic nation which have a clause like this. Not only have they ramped through these laws, you know, on on prices, on contract farming, on essential commodities, they have included this clause in one of the most important of these laws. It says, no suit, no prosecution, or other legal proceedings shall lie against the central government or the state government or or any other person, or any officer of the central government, or any officer of the state government, or any other person in respect of anything, read corporations, 
I mean, read corporations in brackets, or any other person in respect of anything which is done in good faith or intended to be done in good faith under this act, and no civil court shall have jurisdictions to, to entertain any suit or proceedings in respect of any matter connected to, this, to the actions under this law. Have you read many laws like that in a democratic country? Yeah. So they have taken away the legal recourse of the citizen. And I'm, I've been yelling at this that it's not just the farmers who are affected. Nobody else can sue either. They are dismantling the right to legal recourse. The Bar Council of Delhi, you know, capital city, the Bar Council of Delhi yesterday wrote to the president of India saying this is an extremely dangerous thing that's happening. You're taking away the fundamental rights of the citizen to move the courts when in distress. So this, this is the kind of stuff. And at the same time, the inequalities are deepening. The unemployment figures that, Amy, I mean, they have come down as some amount of opening up happens. But people are returning to much worse conditions as workers. We have tampered with the gold standard of labor law, which used to be eight hours a day. Now you can have 12 hours a day without overtime for the last four hours.